Welcome back guys and girls to another episode of Dad's Toy Garage. As you can see behind me, we are working on my 1973 Toyota Celica, Celica if you're in the States, and I'm calling it Project Judithan. Uh, a little history on that name, it has to do with a receipt that I found in this car when I was cleaning it out. Um, uh, this car was bought from a guy who purchased a property of a hoarder uh, and the property was an estate sale and he had a ton of classic cars. This was the last one to go. They actually almost sent it to scrap. Um, but he said, no, I'll post it for sale and see what happens. Um, I had been started on Project Snake Charmer originally, which was going to be a restoration of caliber that this one is turning out to be. Uh, but this car did come along. I paid 950 bucks for the other car. It was in worse shape. Uh, this is a 12,000 kilometers on that or miles on the on the Project Snake Charmer. It became a parts car when I picked this thing up. That was it was kind of an adventure. Um, I'll often go look at classic cars with my dad because that's just what we did. We often go to records together and pick up parts for cars we're restoring as a kid. Um, but this car, I, I called the guy and I asked, like, because I didn't own a trailer and I still don't, I had to rent a two wheel dolly. I said, do the tires hold air and can it be, can it roll? And he said, yes. So uh, I grabbed the U-Haul two wheel dolly and uh, silly me not knowing how to tow anything actually didn't latch the ball hitch down and so I got to my dad's and the thing didn't come off but he said you gotta pin that hitch down I said oh okay so we pinned the hitch down and we made the hour long trek uh, to pick up this car it was out actually in a, on a farmyard in the very backyard last car to go as I've said um, and we were we took the FJ I really wish I had a picture of the FJ and this car towing so it, none of the tires held air on this car when we got there, but he had a machine shop full of, for some reason, Toyota bolt patterned wheels. Um, we found, I had one 15 inch back and a, fit, a 14 inch on the other side. So I found four tires that held air better than the rest. They all leaked slowly. So we filled them up. This was after dark at this point. Kind of made this trip after work one day, late fall. So sunsets by like what, 7.30? eight around here um, and so we towed the car back home an hour and uh, as I rolled in the driveway the back two tires decided they didn't need to hold air anymore and they went flat pretty much as we got to my driveway so yeah um, I really wish I, I could get some history on this car at some point it would be cool um, I found the receipts for the car um, with with the previous owner's name on it and so that's kind of where the name of this car came from that's why I'm calling it Project Judith Ann. Uh, neat story on the car when I was wor working underneath doing the rust repair I had to literally hammer and dolly the shape back into the passenger side on this car the rocker panel instead of being this tall was now about like this it had been pancaked and there was a dent on the top of the the uh, trans or the drive shaft tunnel from the U-joint hitting it. So this thing has definitely seen Dukes of Hazard hang time. I did leave the dent in the transmission tunnel because, or the drive shaft tunnel. It's got a story to tell. I think it's cool when things have their stories to tell. But for good reason, the rocker's not keeping its dent. But um, yeah, I, I brought the thing home. I've driven it once around the block. No door, no floor on the passenger side. Pretty much nothing else and that was it it was fun so yeah that's a, a very short history of this car so let's get back into this thing let's do some uh, more block sanding body work get this thing looking perfect i'm working in the door jams now and uh, you can see here it will need some attention and then i had done the patch in this area here because it was rusted through so I'll have to do a little bit of body work in there but I'm going to start with uh, this edge where the rocker, the, where the rocker panel is uh, spot welded onto the inner door post area here so okay 
Um, there's six spot welds here. I think what I'm going to do is they got a bit of a ridge here from the tool melting in, uh, putting the two metals together. It holds uh, the door, what is that, the striker or whatever. I don't know exactly. It's part of the latch assembly. I don't know the term. But I'm going to grind these smooth and fill them over with a skim of body filler. Um, it's just a light grind. I'm not actually grinding them off. I'm just going to take the, you can, you can see the ridge there. I'm going to take that off. Um, we'll smooth that out a little bit. Uh, there, I don't think there'll be much body work needed in these door jams. I mean, there's a sill plate that covers this. I'm going to take the door off to finish the front part. That's not happening right now. Um, but yeah, we're going to tackle this. Then I think I'll run some tape along this inside edge here. Get this edge uh, right here. Eventually I'll seam seal it, but I'm going to do that all at one time. I'm not touching that right now. Um, and this edge will need to be tackled a bit on this video as well. So let's start with, I guess we'll bust out the grinder for this. I'll go slowly. Shouldn't need much. I don't really want to burn the paint off on the inside. So we'll take care of this now. To get this piece right, this is what I'm doing. I put one coat on, I'm going to put two coats of body filler, plus I've ground down the spot welds here, all six of them. I've done one coat and you can see it's going to need one more coat before I start sanding. This is just a skim coat on there. I've done a little uh, masking, like I've covered up the edge I just filled. I'm going to do this body filler as well. It's got my patchwork in here, so I definitely want to... Um, kind of smooth this corner off uh, right in here there's a little bit of fine grinder marks I gotta fill those as well just from grinding off the welds for the plug welds I did the body filler is applied in here so we will sand it and I'm guessing there'll be a little bit more filler to do after that but the other area I had to add I did a little bit of finesse work in here. Uh, this area, I had to hammer on this edge. When the rocker was on to, to get the door to line up when it was closed along the bottom edge, I had to hammer on here. And there's a couple marks in here from that, but this is okay. I did it all with rubber mallet. So this may not actually even be from me. It might be from the, um, the forming process of it, maybe the machines or whatever. So yeah, that will all be body worked, um, sanded. I got that little bit sanded there. Uh, so that's ready. This is done here uh, where the rust repair was. And the six spot welds are also done. I got this edge nicely done with the block sand and all this done in here. So that's done. And then the last thing I did is just with 320, I took and rounded off with my thumb. And right here, when I was doing this edge, I actually found another high spot, so I tapped it in, and I had to redo, like, this little portion here. So now, there is another edge to tackle, which is, there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of junk up in here that I got to take care of, so that's not too bad. I got this corner done in here, and, uh, this, I had, I had patched all this, and rebuilt it from scratch and I got the bottom edge sanded and I got this door edge done here so close her up and there we go uh, the door gap is sanded so that's what we got to deal with now just doing a little badge test fit here. I love the look of the dragon and the text. Looks great. I just spent the last, I don't know, I would say two hours aligning this trunk lid. Um, part of that involved cutting this here, hammering it down and rewelding it. <clears throat> and then, because um, this was sitting so tight the rubber wouldn't allow the trunk lid to close properly. Same idea here. <clears throat> so I did that and I ended up doing the same thing on the other side. 
And this is something me and Bob played with a good portion of an evening the other day, and we couldn't get it to go. So I figured now I actually have to dig into the welder for this. But now when you look at it, the alignment is perfect height here. I can work with that. These two are even. I could never get this lid to come any lower than almost this point, kind of in between here. And then this would stay high along this edge. I played with the washers here, like some guys have talked about on online, where you put a washer here or here and it raises and lowers that. It's supposed to raise and lower the alignment, but all it did was the corner. So yeah, I got that. I'm happy with that. And I got this one done. So I was getting quite frustrated with that already, but now we got it to where it needs to be. I can actually feel good about starting to do body work and bridging those gaps there. So, lesson learned, if you want to do some panel fitment, probably good to have, like if you're welding new parts on, good to have your uh, rubber weather strips. I'm going to work on the trunk right now, and uh, I've circled all the imperfections. There's lots of little things on the lid here. It doesn't look like a bad lid, but I guess for 50 years it's not bad. But you can see all the things I've circled in here, so most likely I'll skim coat most of it. Um, and then these are pretty close now, so we'll we'll bridge the gap and go body fill across the across the seams here on both sides to get them where they need to be, so that that trunk lid sits where it needs to. All right, I got the body filler skimmed on this first coat skim on the trunk and we got the gaps I've started bridging the gaps across got them trimmed out as well so the next step will be sanding this out half the trunk is now block sanded out up to the center line and the other side is just roughed in but not sanded out yet and then along this bottom edge here that will have to be shaped yet as well, but it's going to happen after the whole trunk surface is done. So I got this half done. Now we're going to move on to this side here. I had, I've had a bit of a battle um, block signing this trunk lid. It's such thin metal, and when you block over it, it wants to, the metal almost wants to move even under light pressure. And to top it off, all the years I use, this trunk lid has seen... Um, I'm guessing a lot of people just throw stuff on the lid uh, like when you come to the car you just want to throw something on the lid grab the keys and then you pick it up I don't do that but I'm thinking that's probably what happened um, so the high points and the low points gave me a struggle I skimmed initially the whole thing I blocked it then this area started giving me grief it would keep staying divoted with blocking so I ended up taking a fine skim coat over the whole lid block sanding it again and that's what it took it saved my or uh, it, it got the lid to where it needed to be so now I'm moving down here and I've got the next sort of that indented strip masked off I'm gonna fill it sand it. it'll probably take a couple applications and then we'll get the the much lower edge and then this trunk lids done like I said in the past my goal is to get block sanding done on this car ready for paint late spring early summer Get the paint on here um yeah so we're well on our way i want to get the roof panel done next and then the, the side of the car needs to be done the engine bay and the hood so we're close to 50 percent done block sanding body filler on here and we're well on our way um and yeah i want to say thanks for watching the video for those of you who have been following and for the new people joining on the channel and next time we'll be doing more block sanding on this car and that will probably be the roof panel. So until next time, we will talk to you later.